I'm Mr. Grinler, and here are my creatures. And welcome back to another episode of Mr. Grindler's Creatures, but on today's episode we are going to be talking about, well, what I've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks. So, as you can probably tell by my voice, it sounds very, you know, croaky, um, not 100% there, it's not how I normally sound whatsoever. So, for those of you that are new watching this video, this isn't how I normally sound. And uh, fingers crossed in the next couple days because my voice is improving. So, for today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about the experience that I've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks, and that is the fact that I had a, I think it's a ton tonsillectomy, tons tonsillectomy. I think. Basically, I've I've had my tonsils taken out, and I've dealt with, you know, tonsillitis from a very very young age I've had it multiple times a year and uh, the past couple years sorry <laughs> the past couple years I've uh, I've been dealing with uh, a lot of Quincy so for those of you that don't know what Quincy is uh, Quincy is like a form of sort of tonsillitis where your your tonsils get so enlarged that you have difficulty breathing along with your tonsils being filled with this toxic pus. When you uh, get Quincy, you have to go to hospital and uh, you have to have needles about that big down your throat, well, probably about that big down your throat, and uh, they put it down there and they drain your tonsils, and it may sound really rank, but it's actually just instant relief because uh, you, de you deal with days and days of pain, and then, you know, they stick the needle down and they drain it, and it's just like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know. Most most people, as children, they get their tonsils taken out, and they prefer to do it when you're a child because there's less complications. Because um, as adults, and you know, when you get older, you get more scar tissue around that area. Um, your tonsils are more larger as well, so there's more complications that can happen after surgery or even during surgery. So I want to tell the people who watch me um, what's happened the past couple of weeks, and also people who are getting a, a test tonsillectomy <laughs> whatever it is um, I want you guys to be aware of you know what could happen and I don't want to scare you guys honestly and you know I'm a very paranoid person so I take a lot of precautions but I, I, I run you you know from day to day so I went into surgery at about um, well I went into hospital about 7am actually and I was there, I got my little band on me, um, waiting in the waiting room. They took me down to this room where I was by myself. There was a gown and, you know, the socks, so I got all the get up. I might actually have a picture, so I might put a few pictures up, um, but a lot of graphic ones I'm not going to put up. If you guys do want to see some graphic photos, you know, not of me, um, but of stuff that's happened during it, uh, feel free to, you know, email me or message me on Facebook or anything like that or any of my social medias. But yeah, I got my little gown on and um, I was sat in the chair, the surgeon came out. Uh, I think the person who actually, I think it's the person who puts you to sleep because obviously um, they put you to sleep through the anesthesia or whatever it is. And um, I was there for probably about two hours. Uh, come about nine o'clock, I went up to the actual uh, surgery place. So they put me on, on a bed, um, which was actually really comfy. And I had to lay down on it. Um, obviously, I put my hand out and they they put the, I don't know what it is, like a little needle thing in me. And um, all of a sudden, they were like, right, so we're going to put you to sleep now. And I felt this really bad pain going inside my arm. And the next thing I know, I'm just so sleepy, like really, really sleepy. Uh, next thing I know, I'm awake, yeah. And I'm just like, ah. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I was pretty out of it, if I'm honest. And... Um, I was like, oh, when's surgery then? And they were like, oh, surgery's done. And I was just like, oh, great. <laughs> so I was asleep throughout the whole surgery. Um, 
things seem to be fine. I wasn't actually in much pain at all. So if any of you are getting a tonsillectomy, um, the, the whole procedure isn't painful whatsoever. You're, you're put to sleep. When you wake up, you can't really feel anything whatsoever. But the, uh, the doctor came out, the one that actually took my tonsils out, and she was like, right, Jaden, so... She said, I'm going to talk to you about what happened during the procedure. And she said, when I was taking your tonsils out, uh, we actually noticed that you had Quincy in your left tonsil. Um, so I was just like, oh, wow. So they actually took pus uh, out of my tonsil um, during the tonsillectomy. And then my other tonsil, my right-hand side, had, <clears throat> had these granulations in it or something. I don't really know what it is. Um, but they've been sent off for testing. And then she was like, oh, yeah, so, you know, everything went fine. Um, your bleeding, you know, stopped. So they, I think they cauterized or something. So basically, like, they burn where the tonsils were to stop the bleeding. And, um, yeah, everything was great. I was in hospital for, you know, a good couple more hours. I had a couple yogurts and that. I was eating fine. Um, they they checked on me again. They were like, right, so there's no bleeding, so you're, you're all right to go home. So I was like, awesome, I can go home. And, um, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know what, this isn't actually that bad. So for the first day or two, I didn't really feel much pain whatsoever. It was absolutely great. Um, and that's when it all started to, to go downhill a bit. So again, I don't want to scare you guys. And, you know, um, it's it's been quite hard because this is probably the first, well, this is the first video I've actually recorded since all of this has happened. And, you know, I'm struggling as it is. Um, but content wise on my socials I've just been posting you know old ones so I do apologize about that when I say I'm a very paranoid person I take precautions very well so I was doing salt water um, I wasn't doing any you know strenuous activities I was laying in bed uh, literally that is all I was doing I was putting my head up a little bit laying in bed uh, just watching TV and um, just pretty much dying out here and uh, yeah uh, I felt really bad because I'm not one to just sit down. I like, you know, moving around. I like doing, you know, spider stuff. I couldn't do any spider stuff. Um, I couldn't do any editing or anything like that, you know. Some people probably think, oh, were well, you laying in bed? You can, you know, do stuff on your phone. To be fair, I, I didn't want to do anything on my phone. I just felt absolutely horrid. Like, my, my throat is probably one of the worst things that... Um, can happen to me because I like my throat. I like to be able to eat stuff. I like to be able to talk. Um, I don't like feeling pain in my throat. But uh, looking at my throat, so when when you come out of the operation, you get all like these white scabs around your your throat where it was, and um, it's pretty horrible stuff if I'm honest. It's like this really liquidy white stuff. Oh, sorry. Two six. As the days got on. Pain was getting a bit worse, I'm not going to lie, so a lot of people say that, you know, the the first couple of days are alright and then as the days get on the pain gets worse and worse and worse and worse. I must admit it actually does. I googled a lot of stuff, I YouTubed a lot of stuff as well and I probably scared myself a little bit. But the pain for me was a bit tolerable if I'm honest, so it wasn't as bad as I imagined. Um, so yeah, please please don't worry. Uh, there's some horror stories online, and um, yeah, I don't think it's as painful as that. But uh, just just wait until you hear uh, what happened to me, because I had to go back into hospital. So a couple of days later, started um, bleeding a little bit, which is normal by the way. So you know, as the scabs start to come off, you're meant to bleed a little bit. Online, um, it says, you know, they don't really actually tell you much information when you leave, but online it says, you'll see little specks of blood in your saliva. Awesome. Um, all part of healing, obviously, you know, as a scab comes off, it might leak. Anyway, scab started falling off. I started having some blood coming out of this side, um, out of my mouth, and it wasn't that much, if I'm honest, so um, I went up to, you know, A&E just to be on the safe side, because online it says, if there's quite a bit of blood then you need to go to A&E and there was a little bit of blood you know over time and it was it was coming a bit and stopping and coming so I went up to A&E uh, they checked me over sent me through to Medoc um, so I was there for about five hours actually saw someone from work up there so you know it was a bit of company yeah the, the doctor saw me and was like oh yeah that's normal uh, so you got a little bit of a blood clot in there where the scabs come off um, and then, you know, he said that it's healing quite well with scabbing over. So I was like, awesome. So I said, so, you know, it's a bit normal, you know, bleeding. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit of blood is normal. So I was like, awesome, because, you know, 
No one really told me anything, if I'm honest. And then <laughs> I went home. Uh, and a couple days later, started bleeding out the other side. Now this is where things start getting really bad. And, uh, you know, it was just constant sort of blood. I was just dribbling out blood. I didn't really want to spit because if I spit, the blood clots are going to come loose. So I was just spitting out little bits of blood like... Um, not spitting, dribbling, sorry. I was dribbling little bits of blood like... Uh, um, like laying in bed and I was just like, I want this to be over with. Because um, honestly, it was, it was absolutely horrible. And um, then I started bleeding more. And to the point where it was just constantly just coming out of my mouth. Um, not like pouring out, but it, it was it was like, you know, just my blood, my mouth was just filling up with blood and I had to keep, you know, just dribbling it out. So I went back up to A&E and um, I went and saw one of the, the people, you know, when you have your assessment and I was like, look, uh, I need to see someone from ENT because it, this isn't normal. It's, it's post tonsillectomy bleeding. And uh, post tonsillectomy bleeding is very, very, it's it's dangerous, honestly dangerous. So it only happens to three, I think three percent of people uh, who have their tonsils taken out. Um, so it's a very small percentage, but it, it shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be bleeding. And I searched so much up online, and you know, where I'm such a anxious person as it is, like you know, I was, I was a bit like, whoa, <laughs> and. Um, she was like, oh, well, you're not actively bleeding. I was like, what do you mean I'm not actively bleeding? I was like, I'm constantly spitting blood in your sink. I was like, is that not actively bleeding? And, um, you know, going back and forth, and she was like, oh, well, you need to go see the medoc. And I was like, I want to see... Um, oh. oh, what was that? I said, I want to see an ENT nurse. Um, you know, I, I need to see someone from ENT. And uh, she just kept going, saying, you know, I'm just going to send you through to Medoc. And I was like, I'm not sitting in Medoc for another five hours for, you know, the doctor to just say, right, go home again. Um, you know, because that, that bleeding could have stopped at the point where I went to that doctor. It was on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, I was literally swallowing blood clot after blood clot. More was forming. Uh, the bleeding was stopping and then it was starting again and the blood clot was coming loose and I was bleeding. And it was just, it was a vicious, vicious cycle. And I've never bled so much in my life, so I ended up going home. Anyway, after that, so this is where things started getting really, really scary. That evening, um, and once again, if you guys want to see some videos of this, or some photos, then feel free to inbox me, uh, because I will show you. So I'm just going to check how long I've been recording. I was at home and all this blood just poured out my mouth. It went all over me, all on my hands, all on my arms, all on my top, all on my trousers. It was absolutely, I was filling up bowls of just blood. It was red blood. And, uh, you know, I went up to A&E and uh, in total I was there for about three, four hours. Three, four hours up there. Didn't see a single person, yeah? Didn't see a single person. I was filling up their little things of blood, you know, just constantly. And, uh, you know, after about four hours, the bleeding stopped because more blood clots formed. So I was like, right. I was like, I just need to wait this out. I need to see someone. Anyway, the nurse comes out. Ah, oh, it's going to be about a 12-hour wait altogether, guys. So, you know... If it's not an emergency, please go home. Please go home, yeah, and come back in the morning. If it's an if it's an emergency, then stay here. But it's about a twelve-hour wait. So I thought to myself, yeah, I'm, you know, if it's a twelve-hour wait, I might as well just come back in the morning, try and get some sleep because the bleeding stopped. Uh, probably wasn't a good idea. So this is where things got even worse. Got home, was trying to sleep, and um, you know, every time I was drifting away waking up blood was pouring out again and I was just like oh god and you know they say cold water or ice uh, to stop the bleeding so I was doing ice bleeding was stopping going back to sleep waking up blood yeah ice back to sleep woke up and this is where things got really really bad my whole hand was 
covered in blood. And I was just like, all right, this ain't good. This ain't good. Go downstairs to get an ice. All of a sudden, there is, as I'm going downstairs, blood stripping everywhere. And um, it's pretty rank. But um, I threw up about eight times. All blood. I was literally choking on blood. I was throwing up on blood. I was coughing up blood. And it was obviously all the blood over that period of about 48 hours that I've been swallowing. You know, because I was trying to dribble out as much as I could. But, you know, at the end of the day, I knew that it was going down my throat because I could feel the blood clots going down. I could feel the blood going down and coming out. And um, it was disgusting. I honestly thought what I was going to die. Um, never been so scared in my life, if I'm honest, because when someone throws up that amount of blood, you, you know, you think you're going to die. Like, that is not normal. The the amount of blood, and I did take photos, but the amount of blood that was just everywhere was just, it was like a horror movie. It was like someone just killed me, like. Game over. You know, just, <laughs> it was absolutely insane. Anyway, um, called an ambulance. When in an ambulance, the ambulance came pretty quick. It was an emergency. Completely skipped at A and E. I went through the, the bit where the ambulance bit goes in. They called down ENT straight away. I was throwing up again, just all blood. And this ENT doctor or nurse, whoever she was, just she she was absolutely brilliant. Um, she was just like, wow. She was like, what's going on? And I explained everything about what happened with A and E, and she was like, no, 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 no. She was like any post on selectomy bleeding you're they're meant to call down ENT straight away uh, literally because you know it's very very dangerous you can bleed a lot from this area um, and yeah I was I was honestly scared for my life um, so basically they took me to this emergency place um, and I was put in onto a bed um, they put a thingy in me here um, put me on like one of them IV drip things and uh, she said right she said there's there's two things that's going to happen here we're going to put some some drugs into you which is going to help you help the bleeding stop she went if the bleeding doesn't stop um, she said that I'm going to have to go back into surgery um, to have them re or whatever the word is so have them you know burn it, it was a horrible experience and you know luckily enough the bleeding stopped after about an hour um, of these drugs being in there so uh, about an hour and a half later uh, this ENT team came down and they were like oh and they asked everything what was going on and what happened and um, they checked my mouth and they were like right you're bleeding stopped at the minute um, but we're going to have to keep you in for 24 hours just to keep an eye on it which I was completely happy with so I was in this emergency bit and it was quite traumatising actually because I think this was a bit where people came in from an ambulance. Someone there who, you know, had a pacemaker that stopped and they had to restart their life or something like that. Um, there was just so much stuff going on, like screaming and it, it was horrible. Like there was even one woman who was like, oh, this is the belongings of the person that's died. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, what is going on? Um, luckily enough, I came out of that unit um, after about six seven hours i went up to an actual ward um which was an, an ent ward at the hospital um and i was in a room by myself for for quite some time um up there and yeah all, all the drugs that they were giving me was just just really nice actually I, I felt no pain there was no bleeding and then i ended up going to a, a place where there was some other people as well and at this point you know um I was in, in no pain, I was able to talk again and it was quite nice because you know I was talking to some of the people that were there and the doctors at that point um, from when I went into that ambulance um, all the way up to now well, when I came out of the hospital was absolutely brilliant and perfect and I can't thank them enough because yeah if, if that ambulance didn't come I, I don't know what would have happened if I'm honest um, so yeah I'm one of the unlucky people unfortunately uh, they got the bleeding, but also it's quite surprising because she, uh, the ENT nurse said that they give out this figure 
um, on these websites of you know three percent or wherever it is of you know people that have posts on selectomy bleeding it's not actually true so she said to me it's more common than you think so a lot of people actually have their tonsils taken out and um, there's a lot of bleeding after so it is quite a common thing but you know if it ever happens to anyone I just yeah don't don't be worried don't be scared just go straight to hospital don't don't let them send you to medoc demand ENT down straight away or you know what just go up to their ward go up to the ENT department and just yeah you know just throw up blood on their ward and I'm sure they'll sort you out but it was a horrible horrible experience I can't lie one of the hardest things about all of that as well um, so I don't know if you guys remember that mini heat wave we had in the in the UK well it wasn't really a mini heat wave it was a mega heat wave um, probably some of the hottest temperatures I've ever experienced in my life in the UK and dealing with you know your tonsils coming out and your your throat just killing absolutely killing and obviously heat isn't good for recovery um, for, your, for your throat you know they're, they're meant to say like ice all these cold packs but that heat was unbearable for that two days it was unbearable absolutely horrible fans weren't helping nothing and um, that, was, that was just before I started bleeding actually so I don't know if that had anything to do with it but yeah absolutely horrible I just wanted to share, share all of this with you because it, it was absolutely manic and it's been a, a mad mad couple of weeks um, and fingers crossed you know I'm, I'm at the end of recovery now um, feeling so so much better I'm just waiting for this voice to sort of you know get back to it and I hope the more that I talk the more that I rest as well, my voice will be coming back. So yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I'm not going to probably record any sort of tarantula videos at the minute before my operation. Um, I did do, you know, a couple of rehouse videos and I had a couple of things that were stored, um, which I edited up. So I've got a little bit of a backlog. So yeah, until I'm, I'm feeling 100% okay, then that, that's when I'm going to get back to properly uh, doing some more in-depth videos because yeah at the minute I'm sorry that you know the videos have just been rehouses and stuff like that um, I do have a lot of stuff planned but I just need to be 100% okay for that um, I've got a lot of pairings coming up that I need to do as well so I've got um, another Harpacteria pulpropes mature male uh, so I've got one mature male which is on a 50-50 uh, luckily enough I've actually got another female now that I can pair the new mature male with as well so obviously fingers crossed the 50 51 drops and um, I can actually uh, achieve that and then hopefully we'll have another one paired from another mature male um, got some more Balfouri pairings coming up but I'm not going to bore you with them anymore um, there is a couple of other pairings but I can't just think off the top of my head at the minute um, so yeah, there is a, a lot of stuff that needs doing in this room at the minute. I've been doing a lot of rehouses off camera as well. Um, because, you know, I don't want to flood the channel with rehouses. There's a lot of stuff that I do want to do. A lot of video ideas that I do want to do. I just need to be okay for that and I need the time to do it. But at the same time, I haven't really been able to do spiders much. Um, luckily enough, it's not just my collection here. We've got three collections here. So there is other people helping out. Um, and doing the spiders which I'm very thankful for um, but there is you know a lot of catching up that I need to do because at the end of the day I want to check on all my spiders and um, I want to make sure they're all fine uh, because I just don't want to go straight into recording because um, at the end of the day the animals welfare is the number one priority for me um, so yeah just give me a bit of time to, to get that stuff you know all organized and sorted um, until then I'm going to bore you with some more rehouse videos and some other stuff but yeah I just wanted to to share all of this with you guys because it has been a traumatizing experience and like I said if anyone wants to see some photos then feel free to hit me up if anyone is going to have a, a post or if anyone's going to have their tonsils taken out feel free to email me and I can I can explain my journey with you because um, there, there is some stuff that you can do um, to, to help recovery time as well so they, they don't really tell you much well where I was anyway they didn't really tell me much about help and recovery they just said you know it's going to take this many weeks um, so recovery can be up to two weeks anywhere from about a month I've heard some people about a month and a half 
Um, so it, it ranges from different, but me, it, it was about, you know, it was about two weeks. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. So, fingers crossed, next time you see me or hear me, my voice is going to be a lot better. Well, when I record some more videos. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. So if you get a like, comment, and share, that would be absolutely great. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon so you're notified of when I upload next. Don't forget, guys, I've got Patreon now. Five different tiers, so if you want to help and support the channel, there's a link down in the description. But Mr. Grinnell's done it. So are my creatures. So are my Balfouries. I'll see you next week, guys. Have a great one. You all deserve it. Peace.